Uh, greetings, uh, good people. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Um, so this video was actually tucked in uh, my second week update towards the end. Um, and there's a young brother. Um, it's been a um, a real treat to have uh, in the comment section. Urge me to um, you know take another shot at it. That video was very rushed, um, and I could have spoke a lot more clearly. Uh, so shout out to HT by Sizzle. I appreciate you, brother. Um, and everyone else, definitely I appreciate you for being here, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, um, and just soaking up some information the best I can give you. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about um, graph count, uh, transaction rates, um, and graph preparation. Not in any particular order. Um, this was also footage that was um, embedded in my... Um, day one procedure video or procedure video day two um, so I know one of the questions that has been really difficult to get to the bottom of happens to be um, how can we verify or trust the number of graphs that um, clinics in Turkey claim to have implanted um, I don't think this answers the question but I, I hope it continues the conversation um, as well as add some um, validity to any conclusion one might make so I'm gonna speculate a lot here and I'm hoping that you know folk in the comment section will also do the same who would really be nice if I had like the software to kind of count it out or to, to color dot it uh, I see Mr. Rolandes had a couple videos where he was actually counting excisions um, I don't have that software but if anybody wants to uh, do a reaction to this video and, and figure out the count please 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 do um, so the first video where they're separating um, right here this footage that was taken with my cell phone by their staff um, there's another one uh, where I kind of get a this one here where I go from right to left on the table that was footage I took uh, when I got up for a bathroom break so um, I counted and you could uh, check my map there were 10 separate petri dishes uh, one of them, uh, I believe, was a uh, dish of transected grafts. Um, I also understand that um, after a hair transplant, you have less hair than before. What do I mean by that? All they're doing is rearranging or moving hair from one place on your head to another. And in that process, some of them are transected. Some of them don't survive for whatever reason. Um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you might have the appearance of more hair, but in reality, you have less. Now, one of the things I learned uh, from an in-person consultation I did here in Massachusetts with Dr. DeStefano, this is my in-person consultation number two, um, that, and I don't know how accurate this was, but I know that generally, um, transsection rates for African Americans are much higher than our brothers and sisters from other ethnicities. Um, if I recall correctly, um, and I mentioned this in that video, that the survival rate um, is anywhere between 85 and 92 percent for African Americans. Um, so I imagine in this dish that I'm zooming in on here, that there is anywhere between 200 and 500 graphs uh, that look, I mean, looking at it, it they don't look good. Um, you see it the way I do. Um, and I'm hoping that those weren't implanted back in my head and they just became uh, some form of waste. Um, do take heart, though. Everyone has um, some grass that are transected. And some of those aren't completely lost, depending on where they were transected. Some of the roots for some of the, thing, the follicles that are in that dish, some of them, um, you know, the root is still viable um, and still in the back of my head. Um, also... There are, it seems they are fitting maybe 10 uh, graphs in a row. On the left-hand side here, uh, those are double graphs. And on the right-hand side, those are singles. I think in this shot here, and somewhere in the second or third row, there's a triple graph. Um, and because they took this footage themselves, um, I'm not... It was on my phone, but they took it themselves. All I could, I don't know if they were putting off of the camera or if this was part of their regular practice, 
I do know um, it will take more than one person uh, to separate all 4,000 of those. And if you look at the footage uh, from my procedure day video, there's only one young lady sitting there. Um, at no point do I remember uh, a second person going to assist in that, but I do also know there was a, a break for lunch, and I'm not sure what happens behind closed doors there. That process continues, and more hands are on deck. Uh, also, I want you to pay attention to the, um, the condition of the graphs, right? Some of them, there's a little bit of blood on the end. Some of them look really clean. Um, and they look pretty much intact. Uh, so I'm guessing there are like five to six napkin-shaped uh, tissues or whatever you want to call those. And if there's 10 per row, I'm imagining they're fitting anywhere between 100 and 150 grafts per little strip that are in the Petri dishes. So if there's, let's say, 100 and there are five of those napkins, that's 600. If you have 10... Um, petri dishes uh you now have six thousand my procedure entailed um four thousand grafts in addition uh when it came time to implant the grafts i uh, started somewhere around 2 30 and ended somewhere around 5 30 so that's about three hours and if you look at the footage of the video for my procedure day there are three um guys working on my head um, Dr. DeStefano in my second in-person consultation in Massachusetts uh, kind of gave, he kind of told me that there's no way that uh, Turkish clinics are getting the high number of grafts that they're claiming, etc. And he told me something that I left out of the video because, you know, I just chopped it up to that's um, inherent bias, given that he's an American doctor and understands that, um, you know, they're losing in terms of competition with clinics across seas, not just in Turkey. But he kind of told me, he, he tapped his finger every six seconds. And he said, at, the, at that rate, one graft could be implanted. And he, he continued to expound upon that and kind of clarified. It sounded logical that it was not possible. But using his logic, let's do this. Um, if there's one graft every six seconds, that is approximately, nor exactly, uh, 10 grafts per minute. If there's 10 grafts per minute, that's the total of 600 per hour, right? So if there's 600 per hour, and I have three techs working on me, that's 600 each tech. That's about 1,800 uh, grafts an hour between the three of them. Three times 18 um, is, what is that, 5,400. Well above the graph number that I actually um, got during my procedure. So I'm going to go out on a limb and, and say that it's not a long stretch of the imagination that the graph number that, I, that is being claimed to have been implanted in clinics overseas that exceed um, the American max, which is around 3,000, I think it might be possible. Um, you know, I just used the map that was given to me. Um, also... I think it's interesting to see transected graphs. So though, you know, my procedure entailed 4,000, not all 4,000 made it back in my head. Or oh, I'm surely hoping that my, my estimate of two to 500, who knows the number that's there, um, in that last dish, it looks, they're dead and, and gone. I surely hope those weren't implanted back in my head. Because uh, all it would do is take up space, um, it could cause problems. I'm not sure if it contributes to infection. I'm not sure um, if it continues to take up space and block blood flow channels. Um, so I'm hoping those weren't put back. But I've never seen uh, transected um, transected um, graphs. Um, maybe in my research, I should have maybe Googled that or looked for that. Uh, so I'm going to put that here to hopefully add a... a, a you know, a useful contribution to conversations uh, in the hair loss community. Also, it's interesting to look at the graphs, and it sounded very similar to, um, you know, one of the consultations I've done also here in Massachusetts. Um, the New England Hair Restoration Specialist, they, um, they, go, they go on to a little spill, and I'll, I'll put a clip of it um, 
here in a moment where or I'll end with it. And he mentions that there's a C or a curve in our follicle underneath the, the skin. And sure enough, if you look at the follicles in the dish, they kind of have a C or a curve. I imagine it would look much more zigzaggy and curvier or more coiled than, than that. But I guess on the scalp, in African-American hair, it's more likely to, to have more of a, a, a tangle or a, a coil. Whereas that C, um, I think it's manageable. Um, and it's not as bad as above skin. Um, you know, I'll leave you with this. Wider curve, they call it a, a, a J curve. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit easier. So ultimately what I'm doing, when I look at this model here, is your hair almost goes in and it almost, it probably looks like a C, the letter C. Yeah. So when I go in with my blade, I literally have to, and I can't see because I don't have x-ray vision. So I need to go in and basically, you know, through my expertise and follow and guide where that hair goes, follow that C to that correct depth and come out and take that hair up. That's why I'm saying, um, if I can get more, then I will.